we meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to our Sunday YouTube service from St Thomas's Church, Groombridge, on this first Sunday after Trinity. Today we enter into the long season of Trinity, or ordinary time, and for that the church colour is green. It brings with it a rather gentler feel as the hurly-burly of the different festival seasons finally settle into these 19 Sundays after Trinity. Today I'm wearing a lovely sunflower which Ros made for me. It is this week's Sunday School Make. And the children will be adding one word per petal, making up a prayer which sums up beautifully what this service today is about. And so let us pray. Lord, we pray that you will give us the courage to tell people about you. Amen. But first, as always, let us turn to the Lord our God and say to him, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. collect for today. God of truth, help us to keep your law of love and to walk in ways of wisdom that we may find true life in Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Amen. Now we come to our gospel reading. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit the God who is, who was, and who is to come. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to Christ, Christ our, our Saviour. Saviour. 
Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ Christ our our Lord. Lord. The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Last Thursday, I took the funeral of Gwen Curtis, who many of you will remember. Her maternal grandfather, George Couch, was a non-conformist lay preacher. I read out a poem by him at the funeral and included a short introduction about him from his 1938 obituary. Here are some of the phrases used to describe the man and his mission. The sudden passing of Mr. George Couch will be deeply regretted by all who knew him, be they churchmen, nonconformists or Roman Catholics, magistrates or habitual offenders, city men or humble fishermen. For half a century of religious and social work brought him into contact with all sorts and conditions of men, broadening his sympathies and deepening his understanding of human problems and human frailty. He strove to lift the fallen and inspire them with a feeling of renewed hope in the future, to find jobs for them where their past would not be remembered against them, to reunite husbands and wives for whom circumstances of poverty and degrading surroundings had proved too much. I also read about how he worked with disenfranchised youth and teenage mothers He began his ministry in Brixham, preaching the gospel to the fishermen, and again in retirement in Lowestoft, he cared for the souls of the fisherfolk. The article says, as he began, so he ended, among fishermen, himself always a fisher of men. You may recognise that phrase as the words of Jesus at the beginning of Mark's gospel, when he calls the first disciples away from their nets to follow him and I will make you fishers of men. Today's reading uses a different imagery. The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Many people feel called to reach out to others in faith, to speak the good news to them, but we don't feel worthy. We never feel worthy. Oh no, Jesus wouldn't be calling me to do this important work. But here in today's gospel, Jesus is doing precisely that. In this passage, the narration homes in first on Jesus himself, then on the disciples in general, and then on the 12 apostles by name and vocation. With the movement from Jesus' own ministry of teaching, preaching and healing to that of his followers, we might expect a thick line to be drawn between him and his apostles. There is only one Jesus, after all, 
and even his closest followers are but a pale reflection. But let us remind ourselves of the makeup of the twelve disciples. The first apostle, Peter, will deny the Lord three times, and the last apostle, Judas, will betray him to death, while two apostles in between held opposite positions on the Roman occupation. Tax collector Matthew worked for them, while Simon the Zealot worked against them. And yet the passage ends where it begins, but this time, instead of Jesus' own ministry, it is this rag bag of assorted apostles who are now entrusted with Jesus' work of proclamation and healing. Here, Jesus is training the disciples for mission. The powers given to the apostles in chapter 10, verse 8, could double for Jesus' own miraculous work. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out unclean spirits. Jesus not only sends them out with power to prove their authenticity, but he gives them the very same words that he himself has used earlier in his ministry. The kingdom of heaven has come near. The parallel pattern of behaviour between Jesus and his apostles is nowhere more striking than in Matthew's gospel. Jesus is our example and he expects his followers to be like him. It would have been so interesting to meet Gwen's maternal grandfather. I think people would have seen Jesus in the words and actions of George Arthur Couch as he laboured in God's vineyard, preaching, teaching, rescuing and making whole, and no doubt turning fishermen into fishers of men. We are expected to resemble Jesus in word and deed, to be sent into the harvest by Jesus is, in some sense, to be sent as Jesus. Amen. We affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist. We believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again. We believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Pat's going to lead us in our intercessions today. As I'm computer illiterate, it is lovely to be able to take part in the prayers with you all today, especially thanks to John's expertise. Can we just take a moment to lift up Sharon and all our church family into God's loving presence today, especially the children? At this strange time of lockdown, we have the wonderful certainty that God, our Heavenly Father, is in control of the universe that he created. In today's Gospel, Jesus gave his disciples the authority to cast out unclean spirits. And we pray today for all who have been struck down by the coronavirus and for all who grieve. We pray for the doctors and the nurses who put their own lives at risk for the sake of the, pe the profoundly sick and bear the trauma of that in their own lives. We give thanks for the scientists and medical profession who are working tirelessly to find a solution. We give thanks for the wonderful creativity we see on our television screens and in our radio programs, especially appreciated by folk like myself who live on their own. We give thanks that, as from Monday, our churches can now be open for private prayer 
just another small step to, more, to no more normality. We pray for peace in our troubled world on many fronts, that old wrongs may be recognized and put right, especially for black Americans, and that good is coming out of past wrongs. <coughs> we pray for an end to racism in any short shape or form. At this time, we remember those who have lost loved ones over the past few months have not been able to commemorate or celebrate their lives as they would wish. Especially Griselda Massey and her father Lewis, who died aged 101, and Di Kelly losing Tony. And very recently we hear about Gwen Curtis who's died. We remember and give thanks for them all. Finally, we pray for ourselves and for our loved ones, for the lonely and insecure, that all may know God's loving presence day by day. We ask these things in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us say our closing prayer together. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son, Jesus Christ, has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And there's just one notice that I wish to give out today. And that is the really good news that the church will reopen for private prayer and to all people in the village who wish to seek a quiet space somewhere in our um, hectic lives. So the church reopens tomorrow and will be open during school hours. If you do wish to come into the church, then please read and follow the COVID-19 advice to protect both you and those who may visit the church after you. Thank you very much. May the Father strengthen us in faith. May the Son build us up in hope. May the Spirit make us grow in love. Almighty God bless us and all whom we love, now and always. Amen. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Thank you. 